So why do I behave this way? What is it that causes these kinds of behaviors? Hello, everyone. My name is Teresa McCloy, and today on the podcast, I want to talk about behavior. Why do we behave the way that we do? And I also want to talk about coping behaviors. What are the things that we use to cope sometimes in the world, and where do we get them? What a fun topic we can dive in on today's episode of the Real Life Process Podcast. So every week here on the podcast, we dive in to different topics and we share different tips and stories and practical action steps that you can use in the life that you live and the work that you do. And all of this conversation comes from our signature content that we call the Real Life Process four different components that we use to help you create and live your best real life. And this signature content is set up in a framework that really helps you define a unique modern day rule of life. And so whether you're listening in to grow your business or just to grow yourself, we're glad you're listening and a part of the real life process community. And don't forget that you can not only just listen in now, but you can also watch if you would like on our YouTube channel. We would love for you to subscribe there at the real life process over on YouTube. So join us in either place, but we're just glad you're here either way. So let's dive into this thought and this idea and this concept around behavior. Why do we do the very things that we do? And as we dive into this, I'm actually going to refer to a uh, scripture passage from the Bible that where Paul actually says, like, why do I do the very thing that I don't want to do? And that passage is found in Romans 5, in Romans chapter 5. And it's a question sometimes that we kind of beat ourselves up against and beat our head up against of, why am I doing this? Why do I continue to, to do the same behaviors over and over again? And I do believe there's something in our human nature, our development, whatever you want to call it, that um, our burden to bear many times is that same repeating behavior. But can we change it? Absolutely. Yes, we can. Can we grow in it? Yes, we can. And I believe through faith, uh, through foundational elements, through choices that we make, that these things can be changed over time, these behaviors. Now, we may always come up against things that are hard. We may always come back to the same behaviors over and over again um, and wonder, why am I here again? Haven't I been here before? And there are many popular personality tests out there that talk about behaviors, that talk about why we do, what's the motivation. You know here at The Real Life Process, if you've been listening to the podcast for very long, that we love the tool of the Enneagram. And one of the reasons I love that tool is because it does get down to the depth of, if you use the tool correctly, what's the motivation? What's going on underneath uh, of these? Why am I thinking, feeling, and behaving in this particular way? But many of the popular personality tests, such as Myers-Briggs and uh, the 16 personality factors or um, the MMPI, the Minnesota uh, Personality Inventory, many of these talk about behaviors and they kind of divide those behaviors into four different categories. There's the task-oriented behaviors, relationship-oriented behaviors, introverted behaviors and extroverted behaviors. And that's a really general way of looking at behaviors. Why do we do what we do? Um, Brene Brown has done a lot of work in her uh, work on, you know, uh, leading and her book on leadership and different things about behaviors. Why do we do what we do? At the real life process, we're really looking through the lens of developing healthy behaviors 
instead of behaviors that help us cope with things. So we're looking at that whole person and we really want to look at how do I lean into healthy behaviors? Our first line in um, our statement around a modern day rule of life has that idea of creating behaviors, rhythms, and routines. New behaviors, new rhythms, and new new routines. So I hope from some conversation that we have here on this podcast episode that you will really uh, think about, is this a coping behavior, which is unhealthy, or is this a healthy behavior? And how can I grow? How can I make step towards healthy behavior? So um, when we think about why we do the very thing that we don't want to do, you know, it's not about having more willpower. It's not about more intelligence. It's not about more faith, more knowledge, more doing. Many times the resistance that we have to behavior is really rooted in fear. And we cope with a different behavior because we're in survival mode. And not to go all into counseling and all of that on this particular episode, but that's that's what happens is we go into survival mode and it, it shows up as stress and anxiety and dread and panic and those false crazy tapes is what I call them that play in our head that we're not enough, we don't know enough. And so I'll create a behavior that distracts me. And that keeps me from living and moving forward. Those behaviors can be anything from addictive behaviors, drugs and alcohol and food, to things like shopping or wasting time on our phone or on social media or on Amazon. I was actually talking with our certified facilitators today on our call, our weekly call that we have for those that are using the process in the work that they do. We were talking about these behaviors and I asked them to actually list out some of the behaviors. We all have them, zoning out on Netflix, whatever it might be. But many of those behaviors that we say, why do I do this? We're actually using it to avoid something else, something that we might be fearful of. Now, in this particular conversation that I was having with our facilitators, we were actually talking around the idea of managing our time, which is our third component in the process. And we were talking about all the ways that, you know, many of you even, and many of our facilitators, including myself, have read like all the self-help books. We've done all the things that would help us, quote, manage time better, get done the things that we can do to be the most productive. But, and we've learned, we even teach four ways of living into blocking your time effectively, making sure that you have self-care with a present block, making sure that you're in good, healthy relationships with people by blocking out time with a people block, making sure that you're getting the work done that you need to do and moving forward with things that are important to you with a project block. And then making sure that you're getting the everyday ordinary tasks done with some prep block times. Those four key components are healthy behaviors, healthy ways of living into time. But if it was easy, everyone would be doing it. So what happens between you know, blocking our calendar into good behaviors, using our time in that way, and the coping mechanisms, the coping behaviors that we do to kind of numb ourselves or run away or be angry about something, the fight, flight, freeze that you've often uh, heard about. You know, this is what we do. Because what's happening when we're coping and using things to distract us or cope with whatever we don't want to do is we're pushing away the thoughts, the feelings, the memories. Um, We're pushing those away. I don't want to do that. So I'm going to push it away by 
doing something else, a different behavior, a coping behavior. I'm going to use it to cope. For example, I might be in my office today, my beautiful office space, and I might know that I need to dive into a project. I've blocked out the time on my calendar to dive into the project. Uh, Something that a piece of content that I need to create or something that's going to take a little more time and energy and focus. And next thing I know, I find myself in my emails or I find myself checking out something on Amazon or watching a YouTube video. I distract myself with a behavior and that's just a really easy one to go to, right? Technology has made it easy to distract ourselves with behaviors. But a deeper, a harder one might be a relationship that's hard. And we haven't reached out to someone in a long time, or we haven't built a deeper conversation because we have thoughts and feelings and memories around that. So our behavior is to avoid or to numb the pain when those thoughts come up in some way, shape, or form. And some of those numbing behaviors can be quite destructive for us. And so what, you know, how do we want to change the behavior? Well, this all comes actually from our brain, that limbic system. You know, we have things that in our childhood actually experiences and things that have happened to us and we carry those forward. And if there is fear and pain and memories that come with that, our brain says, oh, avoid that. Don't go there. But if there's pleasure and reward, our brain says, do more of that. So most of the time, our coping behaviors bring us pleasure and reward. There's an adrenaline rush that comes with that. And that feels good, right? And so we have to think, how does this affect me in the world? How do I want to do that differently? Coping behaviors many times are a way, unhealthy behaviors are a way to make us feel normal. Like we're okay, Like, it's okay to avoid the pain. It's okay to avoid those things. And we usually do it through that fight, 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 flight, or freezing of self. And so, you know, that those three ways are ways we go into unhealthy behaviors. What I'd like to encourage you in, actually, In this episode, your action would be to say, use a tool that we call the now tool. All of our facilitators and our coaches are trained to use this tool. And it's noticing, opening to all three centers of intelligence, and then giving a whole self response. So when you want to engage in a coping behavior, whatever that might be, so that may be your first action is to just write down what's the behavior I want to change. What's the the tendencies that I want to change? And then what happens? What triggers me into that? That's the noticing. That's the circumstance. Well, every time that this happens, I have this thought or I have these thoughts. There might be multiple thoughts. And so you may need to brain dump those thoughts That's the, you know, beginning part is the thinking. What am I thinking? What's happening? What's triggering me? And then how does that make me feel, right? So that's the second center of intelligence, our thinking, our feeling. And then what's the action that I take when I have that thought? And going back in scripture a little bit where it says, I need to renew my mind. So to create a new behavior, we have to think through it. We have to think, what's the new thought I want to think? And that thought is going to connect to the emotion that we have when we can get out of the emotion and bring the emotion to light. Many times when we numb an emotion, we're numbing all the emotions except for anger. So we want to bring those back awake again and really be able to say whatever the emotion is that you're feeling. 
I'm going to share a really honest thing that just happened for me recently when I was doing a staycation over the holiday uh, weekend. I noticed when it came to my birthday, the reason I had taken some time off and we were doing a staycation, I noticed that I was a little bit angry and agitated. That was the behavior. And I'm like, why Why am I here? Why am I agitated? Why am I a little bit angry that the day hasn't gone quite right? In my plans, some places I wanted to go out to eat were closed because of the 4th of July and different things. And that was the circumstance. That's what I noticed. And then I thought, what's the thought that I'm having here? Well, I'm, I'm angry, you know, because this place is closed. But when I really got down to it, the emotion I was really feeling was sadness. When I was able to finally name the emotion, I could change my behavior. I could change the way I was acting and reacting. And I was able to clarify that many times on holidays, whether it's my birthday or a special occasion or Um, anything where family is to gather, that I have sadness around that. And the reason I have sadness is from the grief and loss that I still feel over losing our son five years ago. So there's always feels like there's a missing element to me. So I've created a behavior of, you know, kind of being ticked off, being angry, um, being upset over small little things. But now that I've kind of been able to name the emotion, I could change the behavior. I don't have to cope with anger anymore. I don't have to cope by running away, that flight piece, or by numbing the fact that I'm sad. So if you can just name it and say it out loud, and then another part of behavior work many times is creating a new experience. So, um, Many times our brain has been programmed through experiences that have happened over and over, and it needs to be reprogrammed with a new experience. So even in that story that I just shared with you, the new experience of saying, I actually took a piece of paper and I wrote down all the holidays and all the times, uh, significant days that I might possibly feel this emotion And I just named it. And I said, these are the experiences. I don't have to have that experience. Now, is it all going to be perfect? No, it's not. But I have named it and I have shared it. Now I've shared it with the entire world, actually. And so now I can reframe it. And that is really a lot of the framework of the real life process is giving you a place to reframe things and re-experience them and see them in a new way and write it in a new way. Because a rule of life is a commitment that you're making, a restatement, a reclaiming of, I want to live in a pattern of behaviors, rhythms, and routines that look like this. I don't want to live in my old coping behaviors. I want to live in new behaviors. Everything from small things like what happens when I have a resistance in my schedule that I won't, don't want to do a certain thing. Where do I go to? What do I do? Why do I do the very thing I don't want to do? What's really going inside of me? What's the thought? What's the feeling? What's the behavior, the action that I'm taking? And how do I reframe that with a new thought? claiming new things. And I believe that that's discerned uh, through your faith uh, in many, many ways as you consider how you're designed and uh, how God has put things on your heart. And then writing it down into a framework is so important. Putting it in writing in one way or another. Uh, We love to use what we call the real life view document and write those things out. These are the things that matter to me. These are how I want to live into them because I want to create new behaviors in these areas of my life. So behaviors is a deep dive about why do we do the things that we want to do. But I hope you can walk away with the action step of Am I fighting? Am I flighting? Am I freezing? What are behaviors that I would want to change? And we're just so glad 
that you're listening to the Real Life Process podcast today, that you're diving into this content, and we are excited to do this journey with you. This is not a one-time thing when we're looking to change behaviors, to change rhythms, routines, and habits. So thanks for listening to this episode. I hope it brings up some questions for you that you can look into and that you can dive into. I'd love to hear what's a small change that you want to make. You can connect with us uh, right now in our Facebook community group, the Real Life Process Community. You can connect there. We'll have some posts there about this podcast episode and how you can connect there. This is part of the work that we do in helping you create your own modern day rule of life. So again, thanks for listening to this episode. We'll be back next week with more from the Real Life Process podcast. Remember, you can find us on our website at thereallifeprocess.com and we spell real life with one L. So we hope to see you and connect with you in some way, shape, or form uh, in all of those places, social media, website, email, whatever it might be. So just remember that every ordinary day has an extraordinary moment. You just have to look for them. And we'll see you next week right here on the podcast.